Hi guys, Sarah with Salmond here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made these absolutely gorgeous resin coasters and I used a couple different things. First I made the love inserts using my 3D printer and then I used of course the resin to make the coasters out of. I put uh, a full cork backing on the back so they won't scratch up your furniture. I absolutely love, love, love the way these came out and I can't wait to share them with you. And today in this video, I will be doing a collaboration with a great bunch of gals. So when you're done watching my video, be sure to check in the description below for links to all of their videos as well. Um, there'll be a playlist link down there and I hope you enjoy them all. We had, a gr we had great fun doing this. We'll have more coming for you in the future. So stay tuned. Now, in order to print the love inclusion for the resin coasters, I'm going to use my Silhouette Alta and I'm using the Silhouette 3D software. I'm going to come right up here to file. I'm going to open my recent um, Valentine's Day coaster insert and it pulls it up right here. It is three inches by three inches and I have it set to a point one inch height and this is just going to give it some dimension while it is being placed in our coasters. Now I go over to 3D print and it's going to pop up right here. I can zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole thing. The way I have it setting right now it's going to take 38 minutes and 25 seconds to print. So Keep in mind, when you're printing your 3D inclusions, they look great, but they do take a little bit of time. So for a set of coasters, I'm going to have a little over two hours print time into this.
Here is the finished word love off of the 3D printer. I do use a Silhouette Alta for my 3D prints. If you would like to get into 3D printing, this is a great way to get started. It's a very small machine, and I will include the link for this in the description below. The next thing I used was um, resin, and I have this silicone resin mold here. The first thing I wanted to do was find out how much resin I needed to complete my project. So the easiest way to do this is to take a measuring cup, fill your um, mold here with water, and however much water you used is how much silicone you're going or how much resin you're going to need. So here, after I did um, my measurements, it was two ounces. So here I just wrote down two ounces so that I would remember for later projects. Now, I did write it in permanent marker. It is silicone, so this wear, will wear off. So um, it may need to be rewritten at some point. But that gives me an idea moving forward whenever I use this, this mold exactly how much resin I need for the complete project. Now, while I'm going to be adding this um, love um, piece inclusion into my mold, I did want to go ahead and use the entire two ounces because this really isn't going to make that big a difference. And once you start scraping out of your cup, you will leave a little bit of uh, resin behind. You won't be able to get all of it out. So if you measure exactly two ounces, it will fall a little bit short. This actually works out perfect even adding this. Now, because as you can see here, I have a layer that I have used some dyes and some mica powders in. So I'm making two different batches of resin. This is gonna be a two-step process. So here I have one ounce of the blue, and then I'll be doing also one ounce of the clear. And then I'll be coming back in so that the resin has kind of this swirly pattern to it, and it doesn't just um, give you the lines and the striations, um, mica powders tend to like to line themselves up. So as the resin thickens, you'll see me coming in and just re-swirling it so that um, I do get this, this more random pattern that I have in here. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is take my cup and because I'm, I need to add one um, layer of resin at a time, I'll be making two batches of one ounce of resin. So because I have part A and part B, I'm marking one half ounce and the one ounce mark. And I'm going to add a half ounce of each and then stir it until it's clear. All right, now before I start stirring up my resin, I am going to put on some gloves because you want to be sure not to get this on your hands. You can use nitrile gloves if you would like. You can pick those up on eBay. I'll include the link for those below. Or you can pick up some of these silicone gloves I had seen on, um, on Amazon. All right, and these are nice because they are silicone. They're reusable. So if you do get some um, resin on them, if it's just part A or part B, you can wipe it off with a baby wipe or a little bit of alcohol, and it won't hurt your gloves. If you do get the resin itself on there, um, you just let it harden. It peels right off, and these are great. I love them. I will give you um, a piece of advice, though. Before you try to put them on, put a little bit of baby powder or talcum powder on the inside of the gloves so that they do slide on and off more easily or they will grip your skin. It will be really hard to get them on and off if you don't. All right, so next thing I need to do is mix this for three minutes and when it will get cloudy when I start mixing you'll see that and then it will turn clear again at about the three minute mark and that's when it is um, mixed uh, completely when there's no cloudiness left but you do want to be sure you hit that three minute mark and go ahead and stir slowly so you don't add any bubbles that you don't need all right so let's go ahead and get started stirring this and then I'll show you how I color my resin
All right, now I'm hoping you can hear me during this part. I have my brand new fume extractor running, which should help keep the air quality in my room at a much higher level. At this point in my room, I do resin, I do 3D printing, and I also have a laser cutter and engraver that I use. So it's very important for me, especially when the days are really cold out, and I can't open those windows because I do live in northern Indiana, and it's a little bit nippy out today, that I can keep the air quality in my room breathable, even though normally when I'm working with resin, I do use um, a ventilator which personal protective equipment is always important. So I will leave the link below for all my personal protective uh, equipment, including my fume extractor. This um, has had some time to set. It's still got some micro bubbles in it, but you know, we're gonna be mixing inclusions in this, so I'm not overly concerned about that. We will be popping those bubbles as we go. First thing I'm gonna be using is this Let's Resin Peach Red. Just going to put three drops in to start. I can always go back and add more if it's not enough, but you can't really go back and take it out. So we're just going to stir that in, and a little bit does go a long way, as you will see. Look at that. That is going to be just about all I want in there because I am trying to keep it on a pastel um, level for my coasters. What a pretty color that is. I wasn't sure if it was going to come out a little peachy or not. That is really pretty. I almost feel like if I put more in, it'd be almost too fluorescent. Now, the next thing I'll be adding in is this pink mica powder. And I will go ahead again and include the links for this below. I'm just going to throw in... Quite a bit. Um, I want it to be on the opaque, opaque side, um, and I want enough that I can get that that look that I was wanting in my coasters. So, a little bit does tend to go a long way with this stuff. And I'll tell you, I'm I use glitter in some things. Glitter is nice, but uh, I like the shimmer of the mica powders a lot better than I like glitter normally. And the resin that I'm using right now with this is DIY Epoxy's um, resin. And I will tell you, I absolutely love this stuff. It's a little bit on the thicker side. It is beautifully clear. Um, and you can have it safely heat to about 500 degrees, which is incredible and I will be using that to my advantage in some future videos. Okay, now I'm just going to pour this in. As much scraped out as I can. Right now I am just going to get this pushed up into all the corners here. See, it is a little bit thicker and it doesn't run as quickly as some of the other resins do. Now, I am going to take my heat gun and I'm just going to give it a quick burst to pop all these bubbles. And you want to hold it about six inches above your resin. You don't want it too close. You don't want to burn your resin. All right, we'll let that set. We'll come back in about five minutes. We'll hit it again. And at that time, we'll probably also have to swirl our resin um, so that the mica doesn't shift all into alignment. And you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. All right, so as you can see here, what I'm talking about, you can start seeing these lines around the outside edges where you're getting the striations as the uh, the micas are trying to trying to line up. So that is something for this look I don't want. And some other things, it's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 
popsicle stick here, my craft stick, and I'm just going to start pulling it in and twisting it so that those lines get broken up. All right, and then I'm going to hit that one more time with the heat gun. All right, and now I'm going to do one more thing to help break up those bubbles as they come to the top. And I'm going to spray it with alcohol, and this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. And this I just picked up at Target. They have the 91%, or at least they did at the time when I bought it. So you can see those bubbles really going to town, breaking up now, I hope. They're going crazy. If I can zoom in on those at all for you. I don't know if you can see that. They are just reacting to that alcohol, pulling to the top and popping like they're insane. So I'm going to let that sit for another five minutes or so. Come back and I'm going to swirl that in because you can see those striations are already starting to come in on the outside edges. And I'm just going to keep doing this until um, the resin doesn't have nearly as much movement and those striations pretty much stop. So I'm going to be doing this for every five minutes for another 20 minutes at least. All right, now it didn't actually film when I laid this in here, but it's pretty simple. After about uh, 20, 30 minutes of stirring and agitating my um, mica and resin, once it thickened up to the point I thought I would be good, I went ahead and centered and laid in my um, love inclusion that I printed out on my 3D printer. And now I'm just going to let this sit and harden for about four hours. Then I'm going to mix up another ounce of resin and pour that over the top for the top coat. Let that sit overnight to complete the, the resin part of this project. All right, I have my resin mixed up. There's quite a few small bubbles in it yet, but we will go ahead and get rid of those as we work it around. Now I'm just going to very gently, without bothering the bottom layer, move my clear resin around to all the edges, just like we did on the initial layer. I'm just being very careful, since that bottom layer is still soft, not to mess that up. We go now. I'm just going to take my heat gun one more time and hit this to get rid of some of the bubbles. Okay, I'm going to let that set for a few minutes, come back and hit it with the um, heat gun again just to keep working all those bubbles out so we have a nice clear top coat. All right, guys, I have now poured the clear layer over this. It has sat overnight and it is hard to the touch. Um, it's not completely fully cured yet. Um, that takes about a week, but this is perfectly good to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and unmold this. And it's really simple with these silicone molds. They come right off. And there we go. We have, you can see the sides here, the clear layer and the pink layer. Now it's got a little bit of a sharp lip up here. So what I'm going to do is just take an emery board and just file these down so that they are no longer sharp. I am, however, going to leave a little bit of that lip around the outside edge um, once I file it smooth um, or file it down a little bit. And that will keep any liquids, if you set your cup down here and it um, has any liquids around the outside, that little lip will just help keep it from running off the coaster. All right, there we go. That's all nice and smooth. And I'm just going to clean that off. Just get that 
that dust, a little bit of dust and debris off of there. So the next thing that we're going to do is put a cork backing on the bottom of these. And I picked these up on Amazon. Um, they're self-adhesive, so they're really easy to work with. They are, however, just a little bit bigger than our uh, coaster. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these down using um, a knife. They're real easy to cut. And I am going to just turn this over and measure the back. And this is square, so I only have to worry about measuring one side. So I'm going to cut these corks down to three and a half inch squares. And the reason is because they will set inside coaster just a little bit so that they're not real visible from the outside. So all I'm going to do is measure this to, like I said, three and a half inches. There we go, and then I'm just going to flip this over, pull the backing off, and I'm just going to center this. Just eyeballing it. Give it a good solid press down, and that is all there is to it. It is on there. It's very sturdy. It won't mar up your furniture. The cork backing makes it safe. And that little bit of lip that I left here around the outside, if you do have any moisture come off of your glass, that will prevent it from running off the sides. So that is it. These are that simple to make. Um, and again, if you don't have a 3D printer, there's other techniques that will be coming up in future videos. I'll show you how you can add inclusions using other items. Now here's the set of the four coasters I've made. I've done just four different pastel colors. I thought they came out just adorable. And I also wanted to mention that these pieces that I've cut off, I don't throw these away. I save them because I will then cut them into quarter inch squares. And you can also then place a square on each corner of the cork and just have four smaller edges rather than the entire bottom if you're running short on the backing pieces. So absolutely, these are something that I do save and I do use. Um, waste not, want, want not, right? So here we go. Be sure to leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of this project. Uh, if I've given you any ideas for future resin or 3D printing projects. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I will see you soon with another video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.